Hello and welcome back to some more Bitburners. So in the last video, I showed you guys how to create a script that can automatically kill all the active net, uh, active scripts within your network. And basically, this script is just a utility function that's going to be used whenever you're uh, when you're migrating from the launch fleets to this new uh, "Give me more money" script. Uh, so in today's video, I'm going to be covering, I guess, the first part of the new launch fleet script. And what I'm going to be covering is the uh, the changes to the pirate script, and also the way that um, the way that I uh, define the consents and uh, retrieve all the ships. So it's definitely going to be quite a, a long video. So um, <laughs> hopefully you guys stick with me. So the first change that I did was splitting the pirate scripts into multiple components, um, and I remember that there was a huge comment here uh, from from infinite trial that said that um, by splitting the launch fleets into multiple parts into its own components you can basically maximize the number of um, hack weaken and grow scripts so hack weaken and grow threads that can run within your server thus maximizing the um, the resource allocation what i did was i created three separate scripts so weaken pirate hack pirate and uh, the grow pirate uh, basically they all take the same arguments so the target the delay the pid and then um and then for every single one of them they sleep and then uh, sleep for a certain amount of delay and then they run their corresponding, um, I guess, pirate component or hack component. So weekend pirate runs weekend, hack runs hack, and grow runs grow. Uh, that's about it. Very simple. Um, all right. So let's go into the give me more money script. Um, so this is a quite a chunky piece of code, and the reason why it's chunky is because um, I didn't really separate them into multiple scripts, just so that um, the people that likes to copy and paste my code directly into their game without um, reading through it doesn't experience any of the importing issues so let's start from the top so I guess what happens when the script runs um, so I define a few supported flags here um, so two of them uh, first is the home RAM and the home RAM is a number between 0 and 1 so this number represents the uh, the percentage of your home service memory that you want to be used all the time. So for example, if the number here is 0 0.9, uh, it means that your home server will always have 90% of its memory used. So what it's going to do is that um, for the remaining, I guess, free space in your home server, it's going to be launching some of the pirate scripts to run on your home server to fill up that free memory. And then moving down to, I guess, the, the flags and then the constants. So the flag data, basically just, um, I just use this function called ns.flags. And basically what this uh, function does is that it takes in uh, like a two-dimensional array of strings or numbers. Uh, and then um, basically just creates a, an object containing all the flag data. I don't know why they... They organize it like this. I don't know why they didn't just uh, allow it to support, um, I guess, like a key value pair. But um, I just went ahead and modified it so that our flags are defined as a key value pair, uh, mapping the, the key, so the parameter, to the default value. Uh, and then I just convert that into a two dimensional array. Um, so this one retrieves all the flag data. So just an object that has home RAM and sort field and whatever argument um, the user has passed. Um, and then down here we have your home server, the p purchase server prefix, uh, the attack delays, uh, like the actions. Um, so, you know, the letters to the weekend, all this will come into play when we're, um, I guess, you know, defining the strategies and whatnot. I just want to mention them just so that uh, you guys don't get um, confused as to where these variables are coming from. Uh, so actions is just mapping the symbols to the actual action itself. 
um, and then you have your list of viruses so hack pirate weaken pirate and grow pirate and all of this will be copied over to the um, all the servers that we can crack uh, you have your virus RAM so instead of grabbing the script RAM for uh, one of the scripts like we used to in the previous launch fleets uh, what we actually did was we um, add every single one of the um, the RAM usage that every single virus has and then we divide it by the virus length and basically what this means is that the virus RAM represents the average memory used by all of the hacking scripts and this should give us some somewhat of a an accurate representation of how much memory um, I guess the cracking scripts will use whenever we're launching uh, these uh, these scripts to our servers and then you have your cracking script here which basically maps the uh, the files so of the cracking the, the cracking script name to the uh, the cracking function and then this is going to be used for our can penetrate uh, can penetrate scripts and whatnot uh, for the validation, um, I perform three validations so that you guys don't misuse the function. Uh, I noticed that there's a lot of uh, the comments um, that was mentioned um, that was caused by, I guess, function misuse or script misuse. Um, so I went ahead and created some guards to, um, I guess, protect the user from misusing this. Uh, so the first check that I did was um, I checked the home RAM and validate whether the home RAM is a value between 0 and 1. Um, so if it does, then it returns an error and then prints it out on your terminal. Uh, the second thing I check is whether or not the sort field is either max money or revenue yield. And the reason why I support revenue yield and max money is because um, sometimes what the launch fleet does is that it sort of scrambles the um, the ordering of the, the servers. So um, I guess the server with a lot of money but has a lot of security on top of it. Um, doesn't report that it's gonna have the most yield uh, but if you actually weaken those servers uh, eventually it's gonna become much more profitable than the smaller servers that's generally ge generating money so that's why I gave this um, uh, this option to the users just so that they can refresh the the way that um, the the launch fleet script um, prioritizes the targets uh, and then lastly, I then check whether formulas.exe exists. Um, okay, cool. So now that we covered all our constants, let's jump into, I, I guess, the main logic. So moving into the main logic, um, just to cover the high level. Um, basically, what this does is that it grabs all the ships, prepares all the servers, uh, grabs the potential targets, and then goes through every single one, and then uh, basically creates the fleets, and then launches the attack, and then um, filters out the ships that or that's already been allocated um, don't worry if you don't understand these yet because i'm going to be covering them in the next few videos but in today's video i'm going to be covering this this part here where i retrieve all the list of ships and uh, preparing the i guess the servers for the attack um, so let's jump into the get ships function here uh, so much like the kill network node uh, basically what we do is we grab we create a, a ships array and then the first thing we do is we grab all the crackable network nodes so the get crackable network nodes is basically similar to the kill network nodes script uh, basically we use the get ne network nodes function uh, so this function uses defer search to retrieve all the nodes within our network um, and then filters out the ones that we can penetrate so the can penetrate again uh, from the previous video uh, the can penetrate basically just looks at all the number of cracking scripts that we have so here so all the cracking scripts that we have uh, that exist within our home server and then we grab the number of required ports for that server to uh, that needs to be opened 
Uh, and then if we have more cracking strips than the required number of ports, then it means that we can actually gain root access for that one. So we only want to grab the ones that we can gain root access to. And the reason for this is because um, it allow these servers will allow us to run our hack, weaken, and grow scripts. Uh, and then I then uh, convert all the server names. So hackable servers contains a list of all the server names that's, I guess, penetrable. And then we uh, convert them to, uh, I guess, a ship object. So if we go into this create ship function here. So basically what this create ship function does is that it creates an object that basically combines all the information about the network nodes name uh, and then whether or not we own the server and the amount of memory that's left um, and uh, I guess the server name is pretty straightforward we store that so that we know exactly which server to launch uh, run our scripts to uh, is owned is basically uh, just a boolean flag that represents whether or not we need to crack the server um, and the reason for this is because um, if we uh, let's say go through our preparation script uh, what it should do is that um, if we own the server so for example the purchase servers uh, we don't really need to penetrate that so we don't need to um, gain root access or open ports because we automatically have root access to those so that's what the boolean flag is used for and then the free ram is just so that we know exactly how much threads we need to allocate for the script uh, and then this memory left is calculated by either um, explicitly define, defining the free RAM and the reason why we take in a free, uh, a free RAM uh, argument here is because of our home server. So if we were allocating a certain portion of our RAM to the, the ships, then we want to also be able to spe explicitly specify how much RAM we need our ships to allocate. Um, otherwise, we just automatically calculate it by um, retrieving the maximum RAM of the node and then uh, taking away the number of used RAM. And that's about it. So this create ship is going to be used um, for the, I guess, the ship allocation and the strategies. So moving down to the next line of this get ship functions. Um, so we grab all the, uh, the owned servers. Uh, so the, again, this one's very similar similar to our kill all network scripts um, script. So basically what it does is that it goes through every single purchase servers that exists and then uh, returns them as an array. And then for every single uh, server name, we then create the ship object so that uh, everything that is in our ships array is standardized to, uh, I guess, the the has information about the free memory the server name and also whether or not we own the server uh, and then lastly we then get the home server so getting home server uh, basically what this does is uh, if the it checks the flag data so the home ram flag and then if it's zero then we just create the home server without any allocation um, otherwise, we calculate the um, the amount of memory we, we want to allocate. So we grab the server max RAM and then uh, multiply it by the percentage of the uh, home server that we want to allocate. And then we grab the currently used RAM. And then from these two values, we then calculate uh, how much free RAM we have. Um, or if the used RAM is much larger than the server RAM, then it means that we don't have anything to allocate. Um, and then we then go through every single one of the servers, uh, every single one of the viruses, and then we grab the minimum uh, memory, required memory. And then if any of the, I guess, the ships doesn't um, have enough memory to run, to run our, our smallest virus script, then we want to filter those out. And then we just want to return the ones that can actually run at least one thread of our smallest virus script. Um, I hope that makes sense. So that's the get ships function. Um, so the next one we have in our main logic is the prepare servers. So this script here is pretty straightforward. So what it does is that it goes through every single one of our servers or ships. Uh, we grab the server name 
and then we copy all the viruses into our server just so that we can run it and it's re readily available uh, and then if the server is not owned then we try to get root access to that server uh, and then for gaining root access we, we first check whether or not we have already have root access if so then we skip uh, otherwise we uh, grab the number of required ports and then if there's any uh, ports that need to be opened then we penetrate the server and how uh, penetrating penetrating the server works is we go through every single one of our cracking scripts and then if the file exists within our home server then we just run that cracking script on that server uh, and then after opening all the ports we then get the root access by typing in ns.nuke and that's pretty much it um, so at by the end of it every single one of our um, I guess ships uh, has all the viruses readily available in their server and also ha we already have root access so we can run the hack weekend and grow commands there uh, so yeah so um, I guess in the next part I'm gonna be covering the uh, the get potential targets um, which is also a, a complicated thing by itself so I'll see you guys in the next one